Hey y'all, this is AL Thick Madam, and I am down here at Walmart trying to kill time. I'm about to go and um, handle some business in about 30 45 minutes, but in the meantime, in between time, I just wanted to come on here and give my thoughts about a few shows that are um, going on that I actually watch, but I don't do full on reviews of. So yeah, there's that. Um, <clears throat> today is going to be very, very extremely hot. It has been predicted that it's going to be the hottest day of the year. And yeah, it's only July. We still got August to go. And you know how I could go sometimes, especially if you're from the South. You think that, oh, summertime officially is from this month to this month. And it can still be hot up until the middle of fall or even a little bit later sometimes so yeah not unseasonably warm literally hot but anyway y'all so i watched growing up hip-hop um atlanta the other day that's one of the ones that i do watch consistently but yeah y'all you see that the The theme, that's what I want to, the, the running theme has been about Bow Wow being in trouble because he was doing the most with his now ex-girlfriend. Yeah, let me do it like this because I know I look crazy, but um, <clears throat> doing the most with his ex-girlfriend and she called the police on him and they came out to the house one time and they ended up having to come out there again. And what happened the second time was he had all kinds of scratches on him and she didn't really have anything. But because of what she said in the phone call, that made them, I guess, be like, okay, this is a domestic dispute. Possibly something physical has happened because she was saying in the video recording that all of us who have actually heard of what's going on, she said that, you know, people wouldn't believe what he's done to me and where he's hit me so it leads a lot of people to believe like maybe he's done like the inside of her thigh maybe he's hit her in her vagina um places that you wouldn't be able to easily see like we were able to see the possible defensive wounds that she gave him were all the scratches we saw him with she bit him and all this other stuff and like deb said it, you know, it comes off like these might have been defensive wounds because he's like, man, look, I went and got a tetanus shot because she bit me and like, he looks bad. He looks really bad. But at the same time, it's like, you know, I don't know. Kiyomi might have been telling him the truth just a little bit. She do the most. I ain't gonna lie, she do the most, but both of them have some stuff with them. So I, I don't know. They both might have been at fault doing a lot. They both have a mouth on them. And, you know, it's just a lot that goes into them being who they are. Anyway, y'all, so this episode was talking about, uh, had various people who were discussing Brandon, who is the godson to Deb Adney. We're trying to figure out, is he being real or fake about the situation, about saying that he is in fire school, trying to be a firefighter, he has told Deb that, you know, he's had, uh, he has a new lease on life and he's done being old Brandon and a lot of people don't deal with him because he seems to bring a lot of mess to situations at times. So, you know, I can understand distancing myself. So his cousin, uh, what's her name, Ayana? Um, who is DJ Hurricane's daughter, who is related to Deb Antony, because that's her niece, and DJ Hurricane is her brother. Um, everybody around Deb is like, I don't know what you see in him, you need to watch him, and they've been saying it from day one, because she sat up there, took him in, and not long after her son committed suicide, she had him up in the house living and sleeping in this boy's room. So people have been really salty about this situation for quite some time anyway. But in this episode, 
Um, we ain't even gonna talk about the little thing that um, Andrea Kelly tried to do at a little surprise party. Don't nobody care about that. I am more focused on what happened as far as Waka Flocka, her child, even rolled up on her and was like, Mom, we've been saying from day one that you don't need to trust him. He done tried her before and, you know, he hasn't been forthcoming before. He's used her before and all this other stuff because of the vocal training and all that stuff. Man, you know what? I ain't gonna lie. When I first saw the Waka Flocka, I was just like, why? <laughs> and I mean, I'm not a fan of his music. I've never heard anything by him that made me be like, okay, you know what? I don't like this person like that, but this beat is what, like, I, I don't care at all. But as far as him speaking on this situation, I was all the way here for every single thing that Waka Flocka said. He told his mama, like, look, we've been telling you for day one that we don't trust him. And ain't nobody got time for this. And I was like, wait a minute, because at the, the little raggedy party, I, I'm just saying raggedy, what raggedy, but at the little party that Andrea did throw, her daughter-in-law, Tammy, was there. And she even said, you know, you sprung him on us. Nobody knew who he was. He came from out of nowhere and you just took him in. And it was just kind of like, this is now my son. Y'all accept him. And we didn't know how to react because, you know, your son had just passed away. He had just committed suicide. So we are all reeling from his death. And then it's like, here, this other random person is out of nowhere. It's like, where, where who are you? Like, literally, who are you? To the point of where she has even brought this man to Tammy and Waka's wedding and nobody knows him. Like, literally, nobody knows him. And I was like, girl, no. I'm not finna bring you around my family functions like that. Like, off rip, especially not no wedding like that. Like, I'm, you're not coming to Waka Flocka's wedding. Like, you can stay at home. I could ask if maybe I could bring you a plate back from the reception. Or maybe you can, you know, tiptoe in towards the end of the reception after all the good food that been picked over by everybody and then get you a plate. But you ain't finna come sit up in the wedding and go to the reception and party with us and just be sitting up here among all amongst all these hit makers because you already know we're just no old oh, just family members and Deb was there and that's it. No, you I'm I'm pretty sure that there were celebrities there as well. So yeah, you ain't finna be rolled up in my wedding and don't know you like that. Who are you? Nobody knows you. So Walker was like, we ain't know who he was. You brought him in. Tammy said when she brought him in and the death was still fresh, they were like, they were so taken aback and just at a loss for words to the point where they didn't even come to the house at all for like over a year. And I was just like, wow, that is so crazy. And I don't blame them because I would have been in my feelings too. If I don't see you outside the house, I'm not coming to your house because there's already too many memories in the house from where my brother, you know, was living there. We didn't even get it. And I, I fully understand that. And this isn't the first time that it was brought up in this show where people were saying, like, look, we didn't have we weren't I feel like we weren't able to really grieve the way we should have because instead of us being able to have moments where we can walk in the room and you know still smell him you had a whole nother man living up in there not long after he passed away so I know for me that after my first grandmother passed away which was my mother's mother after she passed away I had moments where I would walk in the house and go in her room and even after, like right before the funeral, that week, like right before the funeral, days before the funeral, we went into her house. I had moments where I would look in her room and I would look in the living room, just rooms that she normally would be in in the kitchen. Those three rooms resonated so much with me as far as her essence and her aura. So I can only imagine how they were, they basically were robbed of that. Some people like to grieve and be like, I'm going to have a moment and talk to them and, you know, by myself in the room, I want to go in the room, close the door. Maybe I want to go up in the closet. Maybe I want to get up in the bed and smell, you know, him, see if the essence of him is still there. Like some people really do that. They still have clothes. They still have shoes, things that these people have worn that remind them of the people that they've lost until they can heal from that and move forward. 
but they didn't have a chance to do that and i think that is crazy that is very crazy and a similar situation like that um has happened that i i don't know when i'm gonna talk about it but i'm i'm so angry that i don't want to discuss it right now about my last living grandparent that i told y'all passed away two years ago some situation a situation well a few situations actually have gone down and i'm waiting for the right opportunity where i have literally not the first care in the world about what anybody would think about what i'm saying despite the fact that it's the truth but it's just so much that i know if i said something about it right now i would come off beyond angry and it, it it would not be the correct delivery so i'm just holding off on that for now but yeah just know some some new some newer things have happened since then that are still directly tied to her that i am furious about so i'm that's why i'm trying not to even discuss it because that's how crazy it is so anyway y'all i think that's trifling and, and she's to the point now she was like well why would he lie about being in the fire academy and i'm like girl as soon as he said all that i would have been like oh okay i want to meet your um captain i want to meet the person you're training under whoever it is you're training under all that you know what i'm saying despite me caring about you i want to know you ain't trying me i want to know you ain't lying to me you know what i'm saying because y'all know brandon is good for that brandon is, is good for that okay y'all walker flocker tripped me all the way out when he said mom you should have known he was lying when he said that he vocally trained Beyonce. <laughs> Apparently, he was naming off these big names that he was all these people. He said he did all this work for. My thing is this: if he did all that, especially the likes of Beyonce, even though I'm not, I'm not a stan. I don't care about her like that, like a lot of people do. But if I did all that, I would not need to be like, okay, well, let me get my 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 work going because i am dealing with somebody like on the level of deb and me and so that's what he would actually do he was sitting up there getting clients talking about oh well, i have these clients now deb would have a situation going and he would try to you know kind of take over the situation and so deb was looking like well dang i'm over here doing the work trying to mold these people and he over here benefiting from what i'm doing and that ain't what i'm signing up to really do like he y'all if you haven't seen the show you don't understand because you know how deb she gets these people whether you think that she's doing it in a terrible way or not and using them or whatever but she she sees these people whether they come to her or not and she takes them under her wing in one sense or another and she tries to mold them into the people they need to be hence the little workshop that she and the brat have been trying to get off the ground and get started you know i don't know if it's actually active now but that's what they've been trying to do as of late y'all so anyway he brandon will come out of nowhere and do all this stuff and i'm just like sir this is this is really too much like if you really have all this footing if you really know beyonce and have done all this work with beyonce and whoever else who have these big names if you've done all of this, why is it that it is so hard for you to do anything without having to add Deb's name as far as an attachment to it? Because I think you just ain't did it. You ain't done it. So why you want to keep sitting up here lying as though you've done something when you know you haven't? That's how crazy it is to me, y'all. I can't. And so Deb, she just was talking to Walker, was like, well, I don't understand why he would lie like that if that's not the case. I'm like, ma'am, people laugh. For, literally, people will sit up here and laugh for no reason, day in and day out, and there's no reason to lie. My thing is this. I would have been like, look. And then, I don't understand. How you take this person in? And I don't know if that he was actually her grandson before. I mean, not grandson. Godson before all this stuff happened or it, it, it just came out of a situation where she was like, oh, you know, he needed help, so... I'm going to take him in and I'm just going to name him as my godson or whatever. I don't know. But she has never even met his mama. And I'm just like, why? Why we ain't meet nobody mama? Like, I don't understand. But yeah, y'all. I'm doing the most in here. My car about to <laughs> overheat. I'm like, Lord have mercy. I ain't got time for that to happen. But anyway, y'all. 
I ain't got to yell no more since I ain't got the air on. But yeah, the most be going on on this show, and I'm just like, sir, don't nobody have time. You are doing the most. But yeah, y'all. Um, let me see. I just want to know what y'all think about that because at this point, I, I'm, I've been really trying to believe that he is being honest about being in this fire school, fire academy, whatever they call it. And y'all, Walker took me all the way out when Deb said something about how he, she was going to go up to Station 19 and speak to somebody. I mean, um, Firehouse 19. He said, Ma, that's a TV show. Ma, that's a TV show. <laughs> and she was like, no, it's not. That's a historical fireplace, whatever, whatever. And I'm just like, oh, my gosh. Lord, have mercy. He was like, no, nah, Ma, that's a TV show. I, I'm just like, oh, my gosh, y'all. I can't wait till we get to the end to see what's going to really happen because I feel like it's going to be all a lie. And I'm be like, but what, what have you been doing this whole time? Like, I don't understand. What is it that you've actually been doing? Because apparently you have nothing going on. And every time we look up, all you can do is try to go behind Deb and do things instead of doing things on your own. I cannot stand people like that. It's like, find something to do on your own. Don't try to piggyback off what everybody else got going on because you ain't got nothing going on. And then when things don't go your way, you get into some drama. So then that's how you become relevant in a sense. And it's just like, come on now. But anyway, y'all, um, anything else happened interesting in this episode? That's like the main thing that really stuck out to me. Because at this point now, I just got to the point where I'm like, I don't know if I believe you. Because I'm, I'm like, in, I was always in between anyway when he first said it. Because I'm like, I don't really see you losing the weight like that. And you have to be pretty active. Even though I've seen some, some firefighters who have a little size on them. But you can still tell they do something. They ain't just sitting at the desk. The ones that are actually active and out there. Some of them, they, ooh, Lord. Mm. Y'all, it was this one time when I got off work, there had been a house fire, and I just so happened to go a different way than I normally go. Y'all, I got caught up in the traffic. And so the one guy, he stopped me and in order for one of their trucks to move out. Oh, my gosh, he tried to talk to me. He was so fine. He was so fine. And when I tell you, I was like, oh, my God. And it's like, He's so fine. You can see the muscles and stuff just through the uniform. And you know, you know, when they have on all that fire gear, what it looked like. It ain't like Station 19 when it, you just see the suspenders or something that you might see on Magic Mike. He had on like the full, like what, yellow or whatever that color. It's like neon. That's the kind of color they had on that day because it was raining a little bit on and off on top of that. So, yeah, it was a really bad fire. Him and another one of the people he was with. Oh, they were so fine. But yeah, you can see most of these people, they are in very much so amazing shape. He ain't in no kind of shape. You know what I'm saying? I'm fat, so I can say that. I, I'm saying what I know. I'm not in shape, and he definitely ain't in shape. So, y'all, he looked like he was about to die when he was doing the little workout thing. I'm just like, no, this is what we're not finna do. Mm -mm. But anyway, y'all, I'm about to go in, in this store real quick to get some and get back out of here and go handle my business and get in the house. Cause this, like I said, it's supposed to be the hottest day of the year. Anyway, I'll see y'all a little bit later on.